everybody. Well, hi, friends. Well, from gorgeous springtime in Salt Lake City, Utah. It's Thank God I'm Atheist. The podcast. I'm Frank Feldman. And I'm Dan Beecher. And coming up on the show today, Dan, there are accusations a flying about Ooh. anti-Christian bias in Hollywood productions. Oh, my gosh. It is, it is so prevalent they ha- that they have actual examples. <laughs> So many really, really good examples. And so. we also, apparently, strangely, uh, anti-blonde bias, which is <laughs> which is also mixed into the whole thing. We'll get to that. Yeah. Um, Maybe they're mad because this was written in the uh, in the the Utah based uh, Mormon owned newspaper, the Deseret News. And uh, a lot of Mormon people like to uh, well, mostly women like to dye their hair blonde. So maybe they're mad. <laughs> Maybe it's all part and parcel. Well, there's a lot of little toeheads running around this state. So, I mean, blonde is a thing here. Yeah, that's true. It is. It's. It is a very white state, and there are. (laughs) There's a lot of blonde. There's a lot. It's just Caucasian, as far as the eye can see. Mm -hmm. The caucasity of it all. Oh, indeed. And they're 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 angry, and they're they're just sick and tired of these poor (laughs) representations. And, and uh, we are sick and tired of them. <laughs> so we'll talk about it. Uh, but first, Dan, um, some some things happened this week we need to talk about. Yeah. Uh, one of which, uh, Pew Research, who we love, has uh, released some results of a poll that they uh, conducted last fall uh, where they surveyed over 10,000 American adults about their attitudes about other religious groups in America. Mm. And there have been some interesting shifts. There was, um, I remember this one, I found a fairly recent one from a number of years ago from 2017 Mm. where, you know, us atheists and Muslims were just like bottom of the list. No, everybody was like, those guys fucking suck. Well, Things have kind of moved around a little. What? Uh, and at the end of 2022, um, Muslims and atheists were no longer at the bottom of the list. We're faring okay. I and I, we I, I are. Doubt that and this is important. Too well. This is important. We're faring better than the Mormons <laughs> by by a, a fair margin. Uh, some key takeaways from the poll. Uh, the survey found that 35% of Americans express very or somewhat favorable attitudes toward Jews, while 6% express unfavorable attitudes. Americans overall also express more favorable than unfavorable attitudes toward mainline Protestants. Okay. 30%, 30% favorable versus 10% unfavorable. And Catholics, they were in the same boat, about 35, 34% favorable Versus eighteen percent unfavorable. Interesting. Um, but I wonder when, if that number would change if they separated Catholic believers from Catholic clergy. <laughs> yeah, uh, but when we look at Mormons, a quarter of Americans say they hold very or somewhat unfavorable views of Mormons, uh, mm. while only fifteen percent express favorable opinions. Fewer. Okay, so I've got my theory as to why this has happened. What do you? What are your thoughts for Mormons? <sighs> for Mormons, I think that they just still haven't really broken through the way they think they have. I think that there have been these shows that have come out recently on like Netflix, these documentary mm. series that have portrayed the FLDS, that's the Fundamentalist Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, uh, you know, very, very poorly because they deserve it. Yeah, um, because, you know, these are the polygamy practicing groups that molest children and and whatnot um, under the guise of marrying them. Right. That makes it all better. And and so I think that they've just they've had a rough, rough go of it. There was under the banner of heaven, which yeah. did a did a pretty, you know, brutal take on on Mormonism. Um, it didn't always feel I mean, even I was like this. This doesn't feel right. It didn't always feel fair. <laughs> But it's out there, right? Yeah. And a lot of people, Dan, especially the ex-Mormon community, really responded to that series. That's we're true. kind of we're kind of outsiders on our take on it. Um, which is we were kind of hung up 
that a lot of it just didn't really ring true. Right. Right. Even um, though ex Mormons worked on it, people who were inside. Yeah. Well, were consulting. It, the, you know, the, the church has pointed out that there were no active Mormons working on it. So, yeah. um, there were, there were only former Mormons in the writer's room. That's actually something that's mentioned in the thing that we're in the article that we're going to be talking about at the end of the show. But oh, that's, yeah. 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 You're right. The, uh, the thing is, I, here's what I think. I, I think that may have moved the needle some, but I think that what moved the needle the rest of the way mm -hmm. was, uh, that was the revelation that Mormons have more money than God almighty <laughs> and <laughs> do fuck all with it. That's probably true. That was not good. Um, the, the fact that Mormons could end hunger in the world <laughs> and they don't. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty rough. Um, I think there's also some interesting things having to do with just personal familiarity. Uh, fewer than half of the respondents at 43% said that they know a Mormon. Oh, okay. um, and yeah. uh, that's less than those who know an evangelical Christian, let's see, uh, mainline Protestants or Muslims. Muslims, like 50% of respondents said they know a Muslim. And 64% uh, said they know a member of a mainline Protestant group, which seems actually kind of low. Mainline Protestants are fucking everywhere. but Yeah, but they don't talk about it. Eh, that's true. You wouldn't here's necessarily the, here's, know, whereas you, you kind of would know with a more. What, <laughs> what bothers me about this is that what that mean, part of what that means, one of the things that that means, mm -hmm. is that Americans are super willing to dislike groups that they have no connection to that's a that's a that's a good way of of phrasing it yeah that's the right take i think because so that's, don't that's be true. gross if you don't know anybody in a group may, maybe you know maybe don't judge the i don't know i pfft. yeah i don't know i don't know any neo-nazis but i sure as hell do judge the shit out of them yeah that's exactly right like sometimes <laughs> it's just enough to know you know, a lot of the unsavory stuff, right? right? Um, to know what they're associating themselves with. Exactly. Right. What the, what the organization does or doesn't do it, Now what's interesting is with these groups, there were obviously a lot of people who were willing to say that they disliked a certain group, right? Yeah. The Mormons themselves largely feel positively toward other groups in America much more so than they feel negatively about them, which is very, very interesting. 40, uh, I'm sorry, 54% of Mormons feel positively toward evangelical Christians, for example. But the right. poll found only 15% of born again or evangelical Protestants feel positively toward Mormons compared to 27% who express negative views. That, so you know, that tracks for me because Mormons always seem like they're they're trying to be part of the club and yeah. think that maybe they are part of the club and no yeah. one's telling them that no you're not. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. And and then you know like also like maybe they've been spending a lot of time and resources cozying up to some of the wrong groups. Yeah. Right? Like yeah. evangelicals are never going to like Mormons. No! In large numbers, they Absolutely. just theologically, they can't get over some of the wackadoo shit that Mormons believe. They're not going to let their kids play with your kids. Yeah. Are you kidding me? And I mean, Mormons would have been better trying to cozy up, you know, to the mainline Protestants. Right. Because I mean, you know, they're cozier. They're yeah, they are. <laughs> they would have reciprocated, but whatever. Oh, whatever. All right. Well. I'm going to take us to Arizona. Ooh. Um, Glendale, Arizona, specifically home of the Arizona Christian University, which I'm looking at a picture of now, uh, and their logo looks like it, they just stole it from Adobe. But that's okay. Uh, <laughs> we're not, we're not going to be, we're not talking about intellectual property rights. We're talking about the fact that Arizona Christian University which of course is a private university, uh, is suing Washington Elementary School District uh, because that school district, the largest in Arizona, uh, which has more than 25,000 students mm -hmm. uh, wow. in 33 different elementary schools, mm. 
they have the the district has decided to discontinue its relationship with Arizona Christian. Uh, okay. And what that means is that the student teachers are not going to be able to do their uh, get their teaching experience. Oh, in the in in the public schools. Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, it is due to the reason that this happened is because Arizona Christian has a strong that is that is the uh, the school district's term strong anti LGBTQ stance. Okay. And uh, the school district has decided that that is counter to their mission of protecting all of their students and faculty. And they so, feel that student teachers coming from that university pose a risk. They do. Yeah. It seems in a statement issued by uh, the district board president, Nikki Gomez Whaley, uh, they said, while we recognize the right of individuals to practice their faith, public schools are secular institutions to that end. The board unanimously voted to discontinue its partnership with uh, Arizona Christian University, whose policies do not align with our commitment to create a safe place for our LGBTQ plus students, staff, and community. What? They said this is this not is a, a public school board. How did this happen? I, I know. Well, don't worry. It's obviously going to be struck down by our awful court system. So, <laughs> wow. Don't 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 uh, don't fret here. Uh, they what they went on to say was this is not a rejection of any particular faith as we remain open to partnering with faith-based organizations that share our commitment to e equality and inclusion. I think they might be in a little trouble here. I don't know. I I mean I I even if our courts weren't just packed all the way up with yeah. with you know federalist society dipshits uh I I think they might be in some trouble with this one but hmm I want what it makes me wonder is what incidents have occurred that yeah. have that have brought this to light. What are they light. addressing? Yeah. Because this has not come out of nowhere. This something has happened and probably multiple times. Yeah. Hmm. But yeah, the schools appar apparently they the the board cited uh their religious mission which includes its desire to promote quote biblically informed values like quote traditional sexual morality and lifelong marriage between one man and one woman. This is the university that said that. This is the university. Okay. So like yeah, like if their mission is to send teachers out into the world in order to specifically get those messages to children, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think that it's uh, it's totally appropriate to say as long as that's your mission, we can, we're not going to let you near our kids. I think it's awesome. I, I'm I'm personally I'm shocked. Yeah, and uh, how do we get that school board? In everywhere. school board everywhere in this country. You are now the school board of the country. <laughs> I mean, honestly, like it, it's a story from Arizona. I know nothing about Glendale, but I know a few things about Arizona. And right. I did not see this coming. You started talking about the schools and blah blah blah. I was like, oh, this is gonna I know. This ain't gonna be good. I know. Glendale. You would, Glendale, but, Arizona. But, but we are wrong. We were wrong. It is we who are mistaken. Yeah. Having negative views about states um, subverted. I mean, well, I've got one. We're not wrong about Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. We've been to, we know about Arizona. Uh, well, here's another state that this one, though, never fails to subvert your expectations <laughs> okay. uh, at all. Oklahoma, uh. everybody. Um, Oklahoma. Where the wind comes sweeping down the plain. Oklahoma lawmakers, state legislators, were considering a bill uh, having to do with corporal punishment um, mm. uh, this last week. <laughs> corporal punishment, Dan, is allowed in 19 states in this oh, country. Oh, good. Did you know that? Thank I didn't God. know it was so many. I mean, you look at the map of where it's allowed, and it's a lot of where you would expect. Right. Yeah. It's all we're talking lot. about hitting kids, hitting kids at the public schools, public schools <laughs> being allowed 
to strike your kid strike as a form a of punishment yeah. rather than timeouts. I don't even know if those are popular with teachers anymore, but like, um, you know, we had our name written on the board and that was like mm. the worst public shaming <laughs> ever. Right. Yeah. I don't know how that worked and, and it's probably, there's probably something wrong with it. I know because what they did in the schools in the eighties, I'm sure doesn't yeah. stand anymore, but yeah. Oh my God. Your name written on the board. That was in California. Yeah. But in Oklahoma, when we moved to Oklahoma, I was in high school and I found out that I'm sorry. The principal is allowed to do what with that paddle. Oh, and by the time you get to high school, it's a paddle. It's not even with their hand. Oh, it's a paddle when you're a little kid too. Really? Yeah. But they're not like, you know, full on. Well, I'm sure it happens where they're like full yeah. on swinging at the kid. But yeah, like, depends on how they're much supposed they to just kid. like, you know, smack them, not, you know, not cane them in some <laughs> sort of like, you know, whatever. Anyway, so there are 19 states where it's allowed, largely in the South, places like Colorado really surprised Jesus. me. I bet there's a lot of school districts that just prohibit it specifically, but state law does allow it. Anyway, um, that's, Oklahoma that's was the, the, the legislators were uh, considering a bill that would have ended corporal punishment, not entirely, just for disabled students. And, they, oh my God. and it did not pass. Uh, Literally, they could not find enough votes in the Oklahoma state legislature to <laughs> not allow the principals to strike disabled <laughs> students what the fuck is wrong with you <laughs> well dan i'll tell you what's wrong uh <laughs> it has to do with proverbs 29 according to representative jim olson a republican yeah. shock yeah. shock and horror yeah. um the rod and reproof give wisdom but a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame he quoted the bible as saying, adding that the biblical line seems to endorse the use of corporal punishment. He also provided an example from a constituent who said his disabled child did not respond to positive motivation, but instead, quote, responded very well to corporal punishment. By uh, very well, do you mean very strongly? That's, because there's yeah, a difference. That's exactly it, right? So according to um, some statistics that were pull, pulled together by, uh, in something called the Hetchinger Report, let's see, nationally more than 69,000 students received corporal punishment uh, during the 2017-2018 uh, school year. And yeah, it's, there's, there's some pretty sh sh striking details. Um, <laughs> For example, and this is not part of that report, I don't think, but in Tennessee, uh, disabled students were paddled at more than twice the rate as the general population of students, which just seems just terribly awful and it's so fucking cruel backwards and, and just fucked up, um, especially because, you know, the rest of the country um, <laughs> uses evidence based you know, um, standards yeah. like the positive behavior interventions and supports, uh, the PBIS, I guess, <laughs> don't um, say PBIS. <laughs> that's the PBIS, I guess. <laughs> um, it's, um, it's used to support students, behavioral, academic, social, emotional, and mental health needs and greatly benefits disabled students, yeah. uh, as a model or if whatever. you're too fucking lazy or unskilled to be able to deal with special education, special needs students mm -mm. without hitting them. It's unbelievable. You don't belong in a school. <laughs> That's not where you go work in sanitation or, or anything else. Uh, you don't belong there. Yeah. Uh, but you know, Oklahoma. That's all I, that's all I want to say. And I, everybody listeners who are in Oklahoma, listen, I, 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 I spent a good amount of time in Oklahoma growing up. I know what it's about. Yeah. Just Oklahoma. Just get out, get just, out of Oklahoma. Oh, you, that's, that's easy to say. Right. But like, so we'll start brutal. a fund. We're going to start a fund to get you out of Oklahoma. Everybody get out. <laughs>
It's it, it's a lost cause. <sighs> oh <sighs> Lord Jesus! Do you, you if you can't pass a law saying you're not allowed to hit mentally disabled students, yeah, and then like, use the Bible to back dunk. you up, yeah. I know, I know, right? It's such, it's so much the, it's, it's the, that should be the easiest. Oh, obviously we'll sail this through. Yeah. What the fuck is oh. wrong with humans? No. All right. <laughs> uh, I mean, that, that should be the subtitle of this show. Yeah. I don't know why I'm, why I'm so up in arms. Everything we talk about is what the fuck is wrong with humans, <laughs> As, including my next uh, story, which takes place in South Carolina. Where a uh, a a fifteen year old freshman uh, at River Bluff High School, okay, uh, one Marissa Barnwell, because uh, the family uh, came out uh, came, went public with this story. Mm. She was not yet in class; she was on her way to class, and she they, they started doing the Pledge of Allegiance over the loudspeakers, mm -hmm. and uh, she did not. She was walking in the hallway, did not choose to stop and participate mm -hmm. in, in the pledge, which, by the way, the, the law apparently in, uh, in what, what Carolina, South Carolina, is that you have to do the, everybody has to do the pledge unless you don't want to, um, which. Okay. Great. Like I'm it like is mandatory, but you can opt out. Okay. So she, uh, she was walking down the hall, opting out. Uh, apparently, she, according to her, not the only person walking down the hall and uh, and not saying the pledge in the middle of the hallway, which would be weird no matter what. But special education teacher Nicole Livingston decided that this was a bridge too far <laughs> and uh, literally yelled at her, demanding that she uh, stop walking and say the pledge and then physically grabbed her and pushed her against the wall uh, to try and force her to stop walking. What? Uh, and, uh, and say this uh, creepy uh, chant oh my with, with God. the rest of the school. You said special education teacher? Yeah. yeah. She happened to just be in the hallway and just lost her goddamn mind because this w young woman wouldn't. Wasn't honoring the the fucking and what state country. was this? South Carolina. Oh yeah, okay, that's one of the abuse child abuse states. There you go. So <laughs> According she was to my well map. within her rights. Absolutely. Well, the, fam the family is suing, so uh, maybe she wasn't within her rights, especially since the uh, the state allows the student to opt out. So the so the student was not actually breaking any rules. It does feel a little much to give to to apply corporal punishment when no rules are being broken. Mm. It feels like you if you're going to do corporal punishment, you likely should save it for, you know, when something's gone wrong. <laughs> yeah. I don't think, you know, I'm going to point this out because I don't think that it is insignificant. There's nothing that points to this other than it, its existence. I'm just going to point out the teacher was white, the student was black. Oh, uh, I don't think that that's a power dynamic that sh that is insignificant in this uh, in this moment. Yeah. So uh, well, there and, you I, go. and I will say what that teacher did was not corporal punishment. No, as as, is, as typically defined by schools and right. in these places where it is allowed. It's it's actually like there are rules around it. It's not right. I'm not defending it. But like just to, to point out that, like, no. That was that this doesn't qualify. That doesn't yeah. that doesn't qualify as as the this is the illegal abuse of a child as opposed <laughs> to the perfectly legal <laughs> abuse of children. Exactly. Oh golly, Dan. All right. Um, you you remember Jeffrey Holland, right? Oh, or our buddy Jeff. Or should I call him Jeffrey Musketfire Holland? <laughs> this um, is a guy. This is a a, a leader of the Mormon Church. What is he? Is he in the, the He's an apostle. He's so he he's the in the top 12. So he's in the top 15. Oh, okay. He's one of the Q15 as they like to call them. Um that's not 
like official. That's more like a little nicknamey, whatever. But yeah, so he's a member of the Twelve Apostles, that group, the, the Quorum um, of the Fifteen, right? Or and no, then no, no, the Quorum of the Twelve, the Quorum which, of the Twelve, which is below the First Presidency, which is so made that's up of the three. three. Yeah, there's so there's that's the where three? the Fifteen. Oh, okay. That's like oh, the my. main group of guys that sort of run the whole thing. The, the prophet head. is the prophet is the longest serving member of that group, and then he chooses like two of the members of that group to form the first presidency, leaving 12. Anyway, we're totally getting off topic <laughs> here, but just to say he's super top at the Mormon church. He's okay? high up there. And he's, he got some attention a couple years ago while giving a talk at Brigham Young university. And he, he used the term, uh, he sort of urged those in a, the, 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 the faculty and staff of Brigham Young University to sort of take up their, their muskets, he said, yeah. right, to defend, among other things, marriage as the union of a man and a woman. Right. right. That's what kind of really got everybody's attention. Also, it the was, fact that he was, was clearly basically a saying, metaphor, take, but yeah. it was a vi- he was using a violent metaphor. Yeah. He was saying we need to be fighting against gay people. Correct. Is what he was saying. And he used a violent metaphor, <clears throat> which and didn't people pointed sit well out with people. Yeah. yeah, weird. Why? Why was everybody getting so up in arms yeah. about it? All he was saying is violence, gay yeah. people. You put them. You do the math. Yeah. And it, lest you think that we're sort of dwelling too much on uh, the whole uh, gay marriage thing, he also during the same speech. He also criticized the the a, a, a commencement speech that had been given by BYU's valedictorian um, a couple years before that, uh, where the kid came out dur- to the public as gay during his comm- commencement speech, um, and he called himself a gay son of God. And mm. Jeffrey Holland decided that he was going to take this moment speaking to people at Brigham Young University to criticize that brave young man. <laughs> um, and Which, by the way, that's undeniably brave. Oh, yeah, absolutely. To use, to use your, commencement, your commencement speech at BYU <laughs> to come out, uh, that is balls right there. My yeah. Um, well, this last week, Southern Utah University... Uh, which is located in Cedar City, and it's a public university, right? I want to right. point that not, out. Not affiliated with the church. Ex- correct. They uh, announced their keynote speaker at uh, their gra- their upcoming graduation ceremonies. Do you want to okay. take any guess who the, that person <laughs> is, Dan? Is it a prominent Utah with ties to the one of the the major organizations <laughs> here in? In our state. Who encourages taking up muskets to defend the faith? Yes. Yeah. Jeffrey Holland, oh. everybody. Um, the Homophobe the, in chief. They just feel, oh, and the SUU, they just feel like they've. this is a real get for them. Right. Um, Home run. President Mindy Benson uh, announced that she was, quote, delighted uh, that Holland will be at the commencement Uh, This year speaking and uh, his address will offer inspiration to our graduates to embrace lifelong learning and give back to their communities as they leave SUU and continue to build their lives. She said Uh, people show up with muskets. (laughs) That would actually be amazing. Well, um, as you can kind of guess, I mean, just because it's Jeffrey Holland, like they probably could have picked uh, an apostle to come speak who wouldn't have um, been as um, poorly received by certain parts of the student body. Yeah. Um, as of uh, 6 45 PM Friday, more than uh, 8,400 people had signed an online petition that calls uh, for SUU to disinvite uh, Holland uh, nice. as, as their as their speaker, uh, some of the comments that were let that, so you can leave comments, uh, when you sign these things. And one person said, if SUU wants the students at the campus to feel safe on our campus, they need to prove they care about the LGBT plus community. And the most basic step in doing that is not asking somebody who despises those people to speak at their graduation. I mean, yes. 
calm down. He's got he's a great speaker. He's uh <laughs> No, he's not. He's one of the most <laughs> smug. The problem with Jeffrey Holland is <laughs> Oh, there's the, only one. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'll add a problem. Uh one of my I always thought he was the the smuggest son of a bitch to ever stand oh, yeah. up at general conference. Like yeah. he just has this air of superiority. He he's a nasty human being. Like when he decides that he's going to speak negatively on a topic, it's nasty. That was yeah. always my perception of him. Even when he was like newly minted an apostle. Oh, so many years ago. And I can actually remember it. Um, <laughs> and I was a faithful Mormon at the time. Yeah. Um, yeah. well a child says a lot it says a lot <laughs> how long he's been there yeah and he's just he just he comes off as a prick he's clearly a prick and you know what like i i really i applaud the students down there uh for speaking out on this yeah. and i don't know if it's gonna do any good um it'd probably be pretty tricky for suu to weasel out of their invite but I yeah think, they're I in a they they're should. in a bit of a they're in a bit of a bind on this one yeah I will so. say this, um, my little joke, I think people should show up with muskets. I think it's I, fitting, yeah. I, I Honestly, so many, right now, all of those sort of right-wing assholes always show up to to, yeah. uh, to protests with guns. Yeah. And it's terrifying and awful, but it would be really interesting to show up at a protest with muskets. I, I would say. With muskets, I think they should show up to graduation with prop muskets. Yeah. Yeah. Not yeah, not, they, not real things. They don't need to actually have guns. I mean, it would be hard to do a mass shooting with muskets. <laughs> yeah. But um, I would be much less afraid if I saw someone patrolling around with a musket <laughs> than with an AR-15 or whatever. Exactly. Uh, All right. Uh, somebody, so, if, if, somebody, you know, get on the, uh, get on a, a, a a Reddit board and and if you own muskets, offer them. <laughs> All right. Um I'm gonna take us now finally to uh a, a few places in these United States. Uh it, we've talked quite extensively about the fact that uh the Catholic Church is a you know basically less an a uh a, a religious institution and more of a pedophile protection ring. <laughs> Uh, and that's just been proven over and over and over and over and over. One of the things that's happening now, and I've, in the last week, I've seen two articles about this happening in two different places, is that the, uh, is that dioceses all over the country are declaring bankruptcy. So gross. Uh, and, you know, the, the way that they're explaining it, it's just that, oh, well, we, you know, we need to be able to assess our assets and uh, and make sure that everybody gets some compensation because blah, 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 blah. No, that is not what this is. Mm -mm. Uh, to quote uh, an attorney named Jeff Anderson, we urge every, he said, we urge everyone to see the diocese strategy for what it is chicanery designed to perpetuate a $600 million corporation's pattern of decadence, deception, and denial. That is about the New York uh, diocese, uh, the Albany diocese, mm, mm -hmm. <clears throat> which is one of the ones that is now uh, announcing Chapter 11 bankruptcy. And to be clear, this is not the kind of bankruptcy that a person files. When a person files bankruptcy, they lose all their stuff. When a corporation like a Roman Catholic diocese files chapter 11 bankruptcy, they're reorganizing their stuff and they're protecting it. It's actually a way to try to, uh, to say we don't have enough money. So literally it's, it's a way to try and keep settlements, uh, that are potential, potential settlements and, uh, and rulings from judges, mm -hmm. adverse rulings down to minimal amounts. It is a way to get out of paying what they should be paying to their victims. I mean, it sounds, it sounds prudent <laughs> from a financial perspective. Like they're just, they're being, they're protecting their assets, Dan. They, 
they are protecting their assets. I mean, um, I think they would be, you know, financially irresponsible <laughs> if they didn't do this, Dan. It feels like, Frank, <laughs> maybe what they should have been protecting was their congregants mm. and that mm. they've been theologically irresponsible for centuries mm. and the bill is coming due and the only responsible thing to do is pay that bill and lose your fucking buildings if you're going to lose your buildings. Mm. Wow, but, I mean, that's pretty harsh. <laughs> I know. I'm I'm mean. <clears throat> I'm just plain mean is what I think. Uh, yes. Yeah, uh, so pedophile ring de- declares bankruptcy. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, exactly. Like if that uh, were the if that were the headline, right? Right. Uh yeah. People, what, uh, there would be no no question. And that all this of is these wrong. are in response to floods of sexual sexual abuse lawsuits and claims and de- demands for settlements and mm. stuff. Mm-hmm. Because that's what they do. Because the because they are guilty of these things. They know that they are in such deep trouble that they have to file bankruptcy. Here's the other thing that really pisses me off. The organizations that people have to sue are not the Catholic Church. They are the individual dioceses. Mm. As though these are acting individually. But when a when a priest has been found to have been abusing children mm-hmm. and the and these churches decide to protect that priest rather than uh, do and you know anything moral about it? They move him to a new diocese, right? So somehow the priests, the church gets to use interdiocesanal. Is that the word? Ooh, wow! Uh, uh, the 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 church gets to gets to say, well, all of our dioceses are connected, but the victims suing mm. don't get to see don't get to say all of the dioceses are connected. See, that's pretty clever. I feel that's, like that, that was, some that was lawyer smart. out there explained to me, somebody needs to be able to find a way to make the whole church responsible for this because it is a whole church issue. And they move these priests between dioceses without any problems, which means that they're all connected. Yeah. I don't, I, 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 I it shouldn't just be the diocese. This should go higher than that. But I guess that maybe the I don't know maybe the dioceses are the ones that have the money. What like you could maybe uh, try the Pope for crimes against humanity mm. at the Hague. Sue the sue the 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 Vatican. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know either. I'm just spitballing here. Somebody's got to figure it out. I don't know how well that would go over. Yeah, we talked last week about or Germany. F- uh, about reparations going from Germany. I read another thing about reparations in France that, and stuff. So, you know, people are, people are, victims are getting some sort of uh, restitution. It's not real restitution. You can't, I mean, you can't fix what they no. broke. No. But, I, I mean, the church needs to feel this. Uh, yes, or else they're never going to fix it. And they're not fixing it. That's the sick part. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, friends at home, if you have any comments that, if, if you have any light that you can shed on this or any of our stories, please write into us podcast at thank God I'm atheist.com. Or call and leave us a voicemail message. We'd love to hear from you. The telephone number is 424 666 8442. Stick around. There's more show coming up. Well, Frank, Dan, our good friend, Hank Kuhneman. Oh, Hank. Yeah. A man for whom I still have a reminder in my phone mm-hmm. about a prophecy that he made. Oh, it's coming in, up. The reminder in my phone is in, I think I said it on air. I said, told Siri to remind me in four years <laughs> that he, pre- that he prophesied that Trump would be bad. Something about Trump. Anyway. Okay. Um, this is a, this is a man who uh, who likes to mix business and pleasure, or in this case, uh, politics and religion. It's why we can't not talk about politics on this show, because literally 
one side of the political spectrum has married itself so thoroughly to the religion of the, to, to, to the, you know, not even dominant religion of this country, uh, that it's, uh, it's impossible to make a separation. This is <laughs> Hank Kuhneman giving a sermon. He's not, you know, he's not on some podcast or something. He's actually giving a sermon. Uh, and man, he veers, he veers, uh, off into some Biden stuff. I, I didn't see it coming. I got to be honest with you. I'm not, I feel like I'm up on a lot of the, uh, the conspiracy theories. I, I didn't see this one coming. You can build your life on sand and be woke. It'll fall. You can build your church on woke. It's going to fall. Or you can build it on the rock, which is the kingdom of God, and it'll stand no matter what happens. Wind, floods, rain, egg prices, inflation, a fake administration, 46 that does not exist. Interesting that God said that from the very start, November 4th. This is a fake administration. It doesn't exist. Why would he say that? And then you got a guy, when I look at pictures, I don't know how many guys are trying to be him. Oh, you're a conspiracist. No, I'm a realist. I'm a cartoonist. I can recognize when somebody doesn't look the same. First of all, you got different looking eyes, different looking head, different looking earlobes. Well, pastor, you're, you're just one of those conspiracies. I don't read conspiracies. I don't even listen to the news. I'm just telling you when I've seen pictures, I'm like, what are you trying to do? You're trying to pull the wool over our eyes. And I ain't buying it because I ain't deceived. That's just a side note because I had to put a little political commentary in there. Look at Revelation 13, verse 8. Oh, look him up. I even matched his signatures once. Somebody sent it to me. I'm like, I ain't the same signature. Boy, some people are mad right now. <laughs> Don't mess with my Biden. Well, no, B-Y-E-D-O-N-E, Biden. There you go. I'm not playing their game. Thank you. Frank, that is was... the game... <laughs> Is the game he's not playing reality? Uh, I guess so, but I love his catty little bye <laughs> done. Bye done. <laughs> bye. I'm not playing their game. <laughs> that is not the real Biden. Uh, I saw the movie, oh Dave. I know what's happening in the world. Shit. No kidding. <laughs> that was a fun movie, by the way. It was a fun movie. <laughs> this is, that's a little that was a 90s fun throwback. reference, though. A little, uh, yeah. Anyway, um, oh Lord, you I, guys, how do you even respond to that? I right? mean, like, like this level of conspiratorial thinking <laughs> is just like you, yeah. you can't argue with it, right? Like mm -hmm. it's so just. I mean, it's, you can't really argue with conspiratorial thinking anyway because it's not really based in reality, right? But you're, like you're, this, you're not on level playing field when it comes to the, if the conversation. You're, if you're willing to believe this right that the, yeah. the, they have <laughs> dummy versions of biden running around right yeah i i, I don't i mean this he, guy you're just a lost cause at that yeah. point like you're it's, maybe is he animatronic is it a is it <laughs> i mean i've seen i've seen some of those boston robotics right videos like yeah whoo yeah, yeah, they, they can make close. a biden we're you know close. they can make a Biden. Let's just like stop watching movies, right? Stop watching poorly written TV shows, <laughs> right? Like this stuff doesn't happen in reality, right? Yeah. I just, I honestly, it's just such an absurdity. And, and what the fuck does it have to do with anything? Right. Well, it's, yeah. yeah. You're, yeah. you're trying to preach the Christian gospel right now. How, how does this, how does this fit into your message? I don't anyway. All right. We had a, a whole bunch of people write into us this week and okay. Listen, you lawyers out there, <laughs> you're writing uh -oh. into us. Uh -oh. Here's what, here's what did the we problem. say? What did we get wrong? No, no. When they write into us, a, we got two lawyers writing fascinating things mm. and they're way too long. But everything about them is really interesting. Stop it. So summarize. I can only read so much. Summarize for us, Dan. Sum Tell just, us. Just, okay. So this first one, you remember we talked about um, 
uh, Yakima Union Gospel Mission in uh, in Washington State, mm-hmm. um, and how they were how, how you know some, somehow they 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 don't they don't want to hire they don't want to have to hire people who don't believe in their mission of hating gay people. Mm, right. Um, so this is so this person who uh, I I can say is familiar very familiar with uh, the laws and uh, this stuff in Washington. Um, but rem- but wishes to remain anonymous. That's the other thing. Lawyers don't want to be they they want to be anonymous. That That's makes a, sense. Of course, it makes sense. All of it makes sense. It's just very annoying for me personally. Because <laughs> I can't. I don't have a name. It's too long, oh, but it's so damn. interesting. I'm just. It's anyway. That you've put me in a pickle, friends. It's fine. I love it. Okay, here we go. Uh, your story about the Yakima Union Gospel Mission. Uh, got me curious, so I did a little research on them. First off, it's not a church or even a religious corporation, as the term is defined by Washington law. It is a charitable corporation, 501c3. That's an important distinction because there are greater protections for churches as opposed to charities. Yeah, 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 okay. While it's tax-exempt like a church, laws require a great deal more public disclosure uh, of charities. I think if UGM were an actual church... I'd have a harder time saying they can't discriminate against people who don't believe like they do. Second, UGM Yakima isn't just a soup kitchen. It raises roughly $7 million per year and is worth more than $10 million. Holy shit. They provide shelter, meals, medical services, and operate a thrift store. Hmm. If it was a small organization with only a few employees, I might feel differently. But given its size and the services they offer, the Washington Law Against Discrimination... We call it Wa Lad, should apply. Hmm. I think it was Frank that touched on my next point, which is that we as a society rely on nonprofits to provide cir- services that governments won't. Right. From what I can tell, there are six homeless shelters in Yakima, uh, which is a city of just under 100,000 people. Hmm. Uh, it's an agri- agricultural area, too, so there are a ton of migrant farm workers that aren't included in the, that population figure. Mm-hmm. Of the six, it looks like maybe two aren't overtly religious, but UGM is by far the largest. Exempting it from uh, Walad would uh, would have a huge impact on a small population. Additionally, if we don't apply Walad to UGM for employment, then isn't the next step to allow them to discriminate against clientele also? At some point... Does that does that mean unhoused atheists just can't get services? Muslims, mm. gay people? Mm-hmm. If UGM decided black people were against their religion, would they be able to disc- discriminate against clientele based on race? The argument that people can just go somewhere else is hollow where the vast majority of our country is rural. You guys live in Utah, so I know you understand. Ime- imagine if it was legal for gas station owners to discriminate based on religion and a bunch of a bunch decided to only sell gas to Mormons. Mm-mm. There'd probably be swaths of Utah where non-Mormons couldn't go because they'd run out of gas. People make fun of florist, the florist case and the masterpiece cake case, but they don't consider that decisions that sound like they only affect cake have a tendency to trickle down to more serious services. Mm. If a baker can, can discriminate against a gay couple, why can't a hotel? Why can't a restaurant? Yeah. Why can't a doctor? Right. That's wonderful. Uh, that's great. There you go. Yeah. I think that that's absolutely right. Um, Tyler also, also wrote, Dan, yeah. not not to, uh, I think it's Yakima. <laughs> yeah. Just, I, just like, I think, it sounded very fancy the way you were saying was I, it. What was I saying? Yakima. Mm. Yakima. I, I, yeah. Anyway. I, I'm I just... like both. I think Yakima <laughs> is more fun to say. I should have been saying Yakima the whole time just because it's more fun. Uh, anyway. All right. Uh, hey, Frank and Dan, this is from Tyler. Tyler says, your story on this past week's episode about Pope John Paul II, you'll recall that we uh, that a, a Polish news station uh, connected him while he, was, while he was a Polish archbishop to uh, shuffling around, to, to aiding and abetting pedophile priests. Right. So your story on this past week's episode about Pope John Paul II and his connection with abuse cover-ups within the Catholic Church reminded me of something that's close to home for me. While it's obviously not surprising, it does shed a very awkward light on a piece of architecture we have here in my hometown of Baltimore. 
When the Pope visited in 1995, the Baltimore Basilica added a prayer garden in dedication to Pope Johnny P, along with what, in retrospect, is a very creepy statue. And uh, Tyler sent a, a photograph of said statue, which has the Pope sort of embracing two children. Mm. Uh, I remember the he first time I saw children. He loves the kids, you see. Oh, and kids uh, love him. Tyler says, I remember the first time I saw this statue. I was in the middle of my deconversion process, and I thought to myself, what are the odds that this guy was involved in some horrific scandal involving kids? Turns out way better than I had hoped, since that's not a bet I would want to win. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Mm -mm. I mean, he was a leader in the Catholic Church. So <laughs> that seems to be enough uh, to make that bet a bad bet. Um, we have a voicemail, do we not? We do indeed, Dan. Well, yeah, I, I think we should just play it. He asks a question. Let's just let him. He sets it up. Let's let him ask it. This okay. is Pete. Hey, Frank and Dan. This is Pete in uh, Colorado. Um, I was just listening to episode 587 um, when you guys were talking about <clears throat> Mormons uh, not wanting to have to report the crimes of their you know, clergy or whatever because um, it would affect their image. And it got me thinking, you know, the crime rate in Salt Lake County is well higher than the national average. I was just looking it up, and it was something like three times higher than the national average. <clears throat> and I know there's only, you know, only about half the population there is Mormon, but I'm just kind of wondering, in your experience growing up, did you hear your parents or – whoever talk about crime and, and make it sound as if it was not Mormons doing it, you know, just along the same theme of preserving the image. I can just speak from my experience growing up in the South and <clears throat> growing up in a Baptist uh, congregation that, you know, anytime there was crime, it, it was just kind of implied that it couldn't be from our group, you know, and I'm just wondering if that was your experience growing up Mormon and how they would explain that today. Um, I love you guys. Love what you're doing. Have a good one. Pete, you've just blown my mind. <laughs> I literally had no idea that our crime rate was so high. Oh, yeah. Huh. I, did, well, I wonder what the crimes are. Um, probably, probably wage theft. That's always <laughs> like, the, it's, it's always, always the, white crime, white collar white, crime, white collar crimes that are, that are the real crime. Like <laughs> th those are the ones that actually like, they don't get prosecuted though. So I'm guessing those aren't considered though. That's not actually considered in the, in the statistics. I, Frankly, I never heard anyone talk about crime when mm. I was a Mormon. Mm. It wasn't even something that was talked about. Mm. Uh, and and a lot of the time, that's because like the ones that make it onto the news, those are often crimes by Mormons. <laughs> well, I wonder kind of in a way, So, because I didn't grow up here, right? So mm -hmm. I, I can't really speak to what it was like back in the day, but like the... Being Mormon was in Utah seems like it probably was just, I mean, it, it is just the norm. It's the sort of, the, right. it's, it's, it's the it's, default. It's the default. Thank you. But in, in other places where maybe it isn't right. Because I, I remember there were, I can't even remember what the story was, but it was some, somebody committed some crime. Right. And the headline was Mormon man, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I remember my mom being sort of outraged by that, right? Mm. That like, well, what does him being Mormon have to do with it, right? <laughs> and couldn't be anything. Couldn't be anything. And I and again, I don't I don't remember the story, but I remember that part of it. And so there was like this weird defensiveness, and like, well, he obviously wasn't a very good Mormon, right? Right. Um, no true Scotsman. Exactly. Right. And so I do find it kind of funny that like crime in Utah wasn't Mormon crime. It was just crime. Right. Yeah. And that makes sense. It makes sense because one of the main TV stations with the most popular news broadcast is also owned by the Mormon church. And one of the main yeah, newspapers the, is, yep. is owned by the Mormon church. And so everything's going to always have a, you know, it's what well, it couldn't be the Mormons, but not yeah, even it, stating it. Right. <laughs> Because it's, it's just so funny assumed, right? Unless it's, I, I almost wonder how, like if, if there was the equivalent here in Utah of the Mormon man blank commits crime, whatever, if there right. was like Catholic, you know, Catholic kills wife, right? <laughs> <laughs> Catholic man murders family. Yeah. Right. I just don't, I, you know, it's, 
it's funny because you, you correctly usually you don't hear about a person's religious affiliation when there's a a news story about their uh about the commission of a crime cuz frequently that's not the point right. you know what i mean like unless they were unless it was you know like the um the Lafferty brothers right or you know somebody who's committing a crime specifically because they are inspired to do so by their religion it's not really necessarily relevant right i feel like though the outside like i feel like in oklahoma i remember stories of like like you can't do anything and show up in the newspaper without them saying what church you go to oh interesting right like, well, at least that's how I kind of remember it. Like, there was always the mention of, and so-and-so, so-and-so attends First Baptist Church on, you know, <laughs> you know, such-and-such road. Right. Okay. Well, I don't know, that might be just me remembering weird shit, but, like, I, I, I feel like it's a thing. I do feel like it's a thing where, like, because it, play, it creates context, right? Right. Even though it's largely irrelevant, there's still some strange context that, is um you know if they're not necessarily the the predominant group or a member of the predominant group it's interesting that like the 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 mormons stole a bunch of money right right i don't know this it, plus it gives uh, a really good uh excuse for all of the all of the other churches to go ha see mm-hmm. they're the bad guys we're the good guys and then when it happens to them they'll just like this was a freak time it would never <laughs> Baptists never do that. No, uh, this was just this was just one bad apple. Every all the other ones about the other churches, that's kind of just how they are. But we had one. Oh, it's so it's so sad. Mm. I, but also, why is our crime so high, Dan? I don't know. <laughs> I now somebody okay, somebody who's listening to this uh. podcast knows what's going on in. Salt Lake and why our our crime is high and knows like what the crime is that's happening. Yeah, because like aside from like my neighborhood, there's not a lot of crime going on. Yeah. <laughs> I did. Did they? Did the Utah mm. legislature criminalize something so stupid that they're just like racking up points? I don't know. <laughs> um. Here's another. Uh, I've got one more email. This is hmm. from another lawyer who wishes to remain anonymous. Uh. This. This person is barred in uh, Arizona. Why can't they go to Arizona? (laughs) Not barred from Arizona, (laughs) but a member of the bar of the state of Arizona. Oh, okay. All right. The Arizona bar. All right. Uh, Dear Frank and Dan, I was struck by the uh, hypocrisy in Give Up episode 587 of the LDS Church pressuring Utah state legislators to back down from including clergy as a mandated report of sexual abuse. If you stand for protecting babies and law and order, you don't, and you don't follow through here, then fuck you. You don't stand for those things. More interesting, perhaps, is that the bill that the church could not abide would only have ensured a consistent standard across all occupations where privilege is recognized. Hmm. The justification for privilege across professions is to ensure that people who are receiving services or professional advice are able to give honest and accurate advice, uh, which may require people disclosing unflattering or taboo information. So the doctor-patient privilege protects conversations where the patient may need to freely share, for example, sexual history or drug use Mm. to receive the best care. Mm. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, society has decided that harm to a child or other victim, e.g. gunshot victims, Uh, overrides the general doctor-patient privilege that is otherwise respected to ensure a person receives appropriate medical care. Nearly every privilege has well-established recognized limits meant to ensure people, and especially children, are protected. Mm. Society can and must ensure that privilege is used responsibly and as intended not to shield child abusers from prison and multi-billion dollar organizations from liability. Mm. Correct. Yeah. You are correct. Uh, hmm. Thank you for that. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, we got some folks to thank. 
We Franklin, do. I'm, Dan. I'm gonna start us off. Okay. Uh, we have one uh, one one time donor. Matthew is a one time donor, and I am going to say Matthew is an elder. Wow. Congratulations, Elder Matthew. Uh, you now have Melchizedek level That's magic some powers. Serious shit right there. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, break out the consecrated oil, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> and we got? over on Patreon, Dan, we have two new patrons. We have a new teacher by the name of Ian from Wine Country. Ooh. Ian, wow. All right. Thank you. Uh, and uh, we have a new priest by the name of Andrew. So well, thank, thank you, you so much to, to all of you. It's amazing. Uh, yeah. if, if others would like to follow suit, get their magic powers... Uh, and uh, and also just uh, be nice and help keep this show going. They can head over to uh, our website, thankgodimatheist.com, and click on the support tab. Uh, you can you can do a one time donation on PayPal. You can become a patron. Uh, there are perks to being a patron over on Patreon, mm -hmm. uh, including the Frank and Dan Diary, which we do every week, yeah. um, uh, among other things. Uh, so so do it. Be a patron. Indeed. And as always, Dan, we have our top donor to thank, our Lord and Savior, Austin! More show coming up. Dan. Yes. Are you watching this The Last of Us? Oh, I love it. I'm not fully caught up, so please avoid spoilers beyond the one that's in this article. Okay. Well, we we yes, we don't okay. want I'm not we don't want there to be spoilers. Right. Um I managed to get through the whole the whole season with mostly without any spoilers. Sure. Um I it's mean, great. It's, I figure I, everybody dies at the end, so like I <laughs> Well, is that a spoiler? They are looking to a season 2. So, oh. I, oh. I don't think you need How to How are they going to do that if everybody dies? Why does everybody ah, that's die? So weird. Okay. Why are you assuming that? Anyway, uh, it, there it has caused many controversies that show. Mm. Uh, but the Deseret News, our beloved uh, Mormon-owned Deseret News, has decided to hit on one of the one of the main non-controversies of the whole thing, <laughs> um, which is that one of the characters. Who turns in turns out to be a very bad dude. Oh. Is changed from okay, so last The Last of Us, for those of you who don't know, is a is a uh an HBO created television program based on a video game. Hmm. And in and the, they follow a lot of the 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 sort of beats of the game very specifically. Hmm. And uh one of the things that they, they have this character. Uh, named David, mm. and in the game, he's uh, he's just sort of a leader of a group. But in the show, they make him a religious leader of a religious group. They make oh. him a preacher. That gives it a little more color, right? It feels but a little more also, interesting. Obviously, just another example of Hollywood besmirching the good name. The untarnished other, the otherwise untarnished name of preachers in America. <laughs> okay, so things. Okay, all right, fine. This is um, so. What we're talking about here is the the uh, the trope, the the time honored uh, whine that uh, that that Hollywood hates religious people and that you can't I, and and that they're just going to make religious people look bad no matter what. It's just so nuts to me. Like there's just, there've been so many shows that show whether it's religion or just like simple faith, right? Like a, yeah. a character's faith is always, is almost always shown as a positive thing. Right. And it's shown all the time. How dare you? In, How dare you contradict this with, show? With so many or examples. This, this article. And there's so yeah. many good examples of like interesting religious characters. Yeah. Right? Of of even like religious leaders who are portrayed so incredibly well. Yeah. It happens all the time. Even this article mentions 
They they literally go out of their way to talk about uh uh what's his name? Marky Mark mm. uh Wahlberg mm. who who has recently sort of come out of the the just decided that that he's going to make a whole bunch of religious movies. He just made one called Father Stew. Mm. Um cuz he cuz Hollywood doesn't like religion and and he he's a devout catholic and right. just just wants Hollywood to It's like dude you just made a movie. It was in wide release. There's no complaint here. Right. You made Father Stew. Right. It got released. It got made. Right. What are you talking about? <laughs> and then and then later the the same article mentions uh that mentions the Jesus Revolution, which did very well in theaters recently, mm-hmm. and the TV show The Chosen. Mm. These are very obvious counterexamples to their own point. But for whatever reason, the writer of this op-ed has grouped them into a different category. Oh, to say specifically to say these counterexamples; these are the exceptions that somehow prove the rule. Uh-huh. It's like you can't go on and mention the 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 very shows that completely disprove your thesis, right? And said that they prove it even more. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. That's insane. They keep saying, I mean, the basic point was, well, if, you know, here's the thing. In a country where, you know, Hollywood, where religion sells so well, they mention Richard Paul Evans, who who wrote the (laughs) Christmas box or whatever, who is also, by the way, a piece of shit, like, like. Toxic masculinity proponent guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They mention this guy as being, you know, and say it for this is a country in which Richard Paul Evans can be a best selling author for 30 years, and yet Hollywood is still shocked when a movie like The Jesus Revolution is among the top three money makers in its opening weekend. Who's Guess shocked? What? Who's shocked when you say Hollywood? Are, right? Does he have examples of ho- all of Hollywood like shocked? Or is I he mean, just holding Hollywood up as the 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 boogeyman that they love to hold up? Guess what? When Hollywood believes that a movie isn't going to do well, mm-hmm. you know what they don't do? Right. They don't put it in the goddamn theater. Yeah. It costs a lot of money to release a movie into wide release in yeah. theaters across the country. This is the same the Hollywood that made, you know, Sister Act, for crying out loud. <laughs> right. <laughs> Whoopi is, Goldberg it, as a as a faith inspiring nun, yeah, saves and a convent, the, and all of the nuns are the heroes of yeah. the movie. Yeah, what are we talking about? Yeah, or what about like what what could have been the most uh, obvious atheist movie of all time, Contact, and mm. and there's actually kind of an interesting philosophical discussion about you know the faith and, 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 and things that you just can't know. Right. Yeah. Like same Hollywood, same Hollywood that put, yeah. Anyway, here's what this points out. Uh, this, this is an exercise in confirmation bias. Yeah, of course. What this is, is if I list enough examples of X, then X is a fact or X is the dominant thing. Right. And and it and it's nowhere more prevalent than when this unhinged article mm-hmm. veers off into hair color, which right. we mentioned before. <laughs> Blonde villains are the big thing that they Ugh. and they mentioned Draco Malfoy of Harry oh. Potter. And go back. I thought we were being old in our movie references, mm-hmm. uh, but they mentioned Ivan Drago of Rocky. And oh my God, Joffrey Lannister and. Johnny on Karate Kid. Dude. The the fact that you can name a few doesn't present, doesn't make a pattern. No. That doesn't prove your point. Oh my God. Because if I can name an equivalent number of counterexamples of people with dark hair who are bad guys. Right. Or people with red hair who are bad guys. Or people, you know, anything. Or people with blonde hair who are good people. Your whole argument falls apart. Yeah. Well, I mean, what it what it shows is is um, and we've we've spoken about this just sort of Christians in general and like feeling persecuted and 
and and, yeah. and whatnot. And the thing that like the Mormon, obviously Mormon writer of this uh, article uh, is also showing is it's that one Mormons, Jennifer Graham. Mormons have uh, uh, taken that same persecution complex and just amped it up. Right. Yes. Because <laughs> to the point that she would go, <laughs> she would pull in blondes or blonde headed yeah. folk. Like, yeah. like what the fuck are you talking about? Right. Like it's like just, if it, you, you were so like sheltered blonde Mormon. Right. Right. Which is a thing like blonde yeah. Mormons. I mean, it's almost like there's a lot of them right here yeah. in Utah. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit. It's just so in, what's interesting to me is like this is sort of one in a long line of uh, uh of sort of articles along these lines. It's not just Mormons. It's it's all of sort of the religious right in this country who don't seem to notice that the you know Christianity is still by far the majority in this country. Right. They have all of the power. Right. In this country. All of it. Right. And yet they still are desperate to be uh, the oppressed category. Yeah. Well, and the, the, the fact of the matter is, if you want representation, right, um, in, in media in general, right, e e e like, I, I don't know what this performance was. I don't know how it was written. I haven't seen the episodes that this guy's in yet. Um, and I, there's a lot of just hack writing in general. So what I'm about to say, just please, <laughs> please. But like, if, you, if you're, caveat. if you're wanting representation, there's going to be good representation. And there's going to be bad representation, right? Yeah. Like an, an, like a fully sort of honest and open, uh, portrayal of whatever your group is, right? Like you're not always going to like all of it. No. Right. And there's going to be some that's really well done and it could even still be in like a negative light. And there's going to be some that's just hackneyed. Right. And, and just, it's just poorly right. done. Sorry. You know, um, yeah, that, that's just how it kind of goes. Sometimes people just fucking get it wrong. They don't know how to write about, you know, other groups, but Here's like the other thing, I'm sorry, you finish your point. No, I'm, I, I was close to it. The thing that I, the thing that I'm hung up on is the fact that like guys, just writing nice things mm -hmm. about nice people, that ain't cinema. Yeah. That's boring. Yep. Nobody wants that. Right. We're going to focus on the interesting stuff. Right. And the interesting stuff is when someone is a hypocrite to their own creed. Exactly. Or when someone is, yeah. a, or when someone, you know, somehow is battling with more, you know, with just like in uh, The Last of Us. It's half of the theme is just good and evil cannot be by necessity, cannot be black and white concepts. Mm -hmm. They are, they, you know, there are, you, you have to battle with it. You have to under, you have to grow a deeper understanding of what is okay and what isn't okay. And people, you know, pe people of good conscience are going to disagree Mm -hmm. on what is the right thing to do in lots of situations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's the whole point of the show. Mm -hmm. mm. So guess what? Religion is going to come into it. Yeah. That's just part of how religion works. Religion likes black and whiteness. And that's how, and that is a problematic thing in a post-apocalyptic world. Mm. Also in a non-post-apocalyptic world, in a yeah. pre-apocalyptic world, but... <laughs> It's easier to point out when there's when there's been an apocalypse. Yeah, or in a what do you what do you say when you're sort of in the apocalypse? Because sometimes it kind of does feel like a, a mid, a mid apocalypse <laughs> movie, you know, or just life. Yeah. We're yeah. in the middle of it. Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, Are, is human life just perpetually mid apocalypse? Yes, of Are, course. Are it we is. just perpetually in the middle <laughs> of the worst things? Just always. Uh, All right. Yeah. Well, friends, if you would like to uh, to chime in on this or any topic that we've covered today, please feel free to do so. Podcast at thankgodimatheist.com. Or call and leave us a voicemail message. We'd love to hear your voice. The telephone number is 424-666-8442. 
Indeed. Hey, go to the Facebook page, facebook.com slash TGI Atheist, and click the like button. And if you'd like to join one of our members only lounges, you can do so. Go to our website, thankgodimatheist.com slash members only. Hey, thanks so much to the Red Rock Hot Club for the use of their fine music. And thanks to Gordon Johnston for the use of his music. And thanks to all of y'all for tuning in. We sure do appreciate you. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.